Middle Tennessee State University. This is the 12th Annual Raiders Choice Awards, presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union. Now, here's your host, the voice of the Blue Raiders, Chip Walters. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Good? Everybody stay dry? Good deal. Well, thank you very much and good evening. My name is Chip Walters of the Blue Raider Network. I want to welcome you to the Raiders Choice Awards. It's our night for our true blue stars to come out to shine. Well, as you know, tonight is our 12th year of the RCAs, which means for you freshmen out there, you guys were like in kindergarten when we started doing this. So thanks for making us feel just a little bit older tonight as we work through the show. I want to thank you for spending your study day with us. I'm sure that everybody had their nose to the grindstone all day long, ready to go tonight and get ready for exams that start tomorrow. You know, the next week will be challenging for sure, but the finish line is just around the corner for several seniors who will be walking graduation stage and making dreams come true for themselves and their families. So let's wish them all congratulations and the very best of luck to our graduating seniors next week. Speaking of stages, many of you tonight will have the opportunity to come on this stage to receive an award. So be prepared. You'll be coming right here where I am. Make sure you have some remarks in your head and make sure you thank the folks that you need to thank. So, you know, it's been an incredible year so far with more stuff still to come. You know, football had a win at Miami. They had a win in the Hawaii Bowl over San Diego State. We had a top 25 ranking, a regular season championship, and a tournament championship, and a trip to the NCAA for women's basketball. So good job there. <laughs> Men's basketball had another strong year, had a win over FAU, who ended up in the final four. So a great year there. Softball had the best start in school history. Still going strong, softball. We expect three wins this weekend. So baseball is right in the middle of the thick of the conference race. They've got a huge series this week as well. Our track teams uh, have seen some phenomenal performances this year. And just this past weekend, our men's tennis team made history. Yes, go right ahead. They steamrolled through Conference USA yet again without losing a single match and won their fourth straight conference title. That success has MTSU among the very elite in college athletics. Academically, it's been another great year. Graduation success rate, 94% for our student athletes, and that is worth a round of applause. And each one of you has had a hand in that success, so we appreciate that very, very much. You know, we're happy to have some special guests here as uh, always this evening, so wanna have some introductions and welcome some folks. Folks, Dr. Sidney McPhee, our university president, unable to be with us this evening, but we're very happy and very honored to have the first lady of MTSU, Miss Liz McPhee. Liz, thank you. Our university provost, Dr. Mark Burns, is here. I see him. Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Deborah Sells. Our Associate VP for Student Affairs and Dean of Student Life, Sarah Sudak. Thank you, Sarah. Our Vice President of Information Technology and our Chief Information Officer, Yvette Clark, is here. Our Vice President for Advancement, Joe Bell Bales, is unable to be with us tonight, as well as Vice President for Marketing and Communications, Andrew Ottman, and our VP for Business Affairs, Alan Thomas. Not sure where they all are, but they're not here tonight, so give them a hard time when you see them. Special welcome to the Chairman of our Board of Trustees, Steve Smith, is here along with his wife, Denise, and uh, Rick Cottle, who is the faculty, uh, or faculty trustee, is here as well. So thank you so much. You know what, we have many more from our academic community and university staff that are here with us tonight. So if you're part of our university staff or faculty, please stand up and let's give you a nice round of applause as well. The Blue Raider Athletic Department, of course, is led by Director of Athletics, Chris Massaro, and it includes 
a dedicated group of coaches, staff members, managers, trainers, academic support. For those folks who are here tonight, you'll please stand and let's give them a great round of applause. The biggest round of applause is held for our family members. They're, some of them are here tonight and they support you all 24-7, 365. And so any family members of our student athletes, if you're here, stand up and really give it up for those folks. Everybody got their cameras tonight? Everybody taking pictures? All right, make sure you put your pics and videos on social media, and we do have a hashtag. It is hashtag RCA2023. So we ask that you put all that up tonight so everybody can find it. So to all of you, we say welcome to the 12th Annual Raiders Choice Awards. All right, it's time now for our first award of the evening, and to make the presentation for Male Newcomer of the Year, Please welcome Blue Raider tennis alum, Sonia Lehman, and from Blue Raider Volleyball, Deja Smith. Good evening. Well, the Newcomer of the Year awards are special because it's the first um, year these nominees have worn an MTSU uniform. The first year can be challenging whether it's transferring in from somewhere else or being their first year of college. Several Blue Raiders have made an impact in their very first year at MTSU. Here are the nominees for the Male Newcomer of the Year. Male Newcomer of the Year. Jacoby Thomas. Thomas played a key role on MTSU's defense that ranked in the top five nationally in turnovers gained interceptions, and touchdown score. The freshman safety had 37 total tackles while ranking second on the team and third in the conference with four interceptions. Andre Horak, playing the number four spot in the lineup, is off to a tremendous start to his Blue Raider career. The freshman has a singles record of 18 and four this spring, tying him for the most by a freshman in dual matches. Justin Porter, Porter averaged 5.9 points and 1.4 rebounds in his first season as a Blue Raider. The Tyler Junior College transfer had eight double-digit scoring games, including 19 points on just six field goal attempts against Stephen F. Austin in the Northern Classic. Jeremiah Boyd. As of April 17th, Boyd is fifth on the team with a 300 batting average. The Presbyterian College transfer is second on the squad with an OPS of 904 and eight home runs, including a four for four day at the plate against Simo on February 28th, helping him start the year on a 12 game hit streak. Marcus Vargin. Vargin has two top 10 finishes and two Conference USA Player of the Week honors in his first season of competition as a Blue Raider. As of April 12th, he holds a 73 stroke average in 18 rounds on the season. And the Raiders' Choice Award for Male Newcomer of the Year goes to Jeremiah Boyd. I want to make sure this thing's on for her. Uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, the man upstairs, of course. This is a true honor being your first year here. Um, I also want to say thank you to my coaching staff and my teammates. They uh, really welcomed me in, took me in, and uh, gave me a lot of love. You know, being my first year, I was really scared coming in here, and they took me in with open arms and really loved me. And uh, most importantly, uh, last but not least, I want to give thank you to my beautiful fiance. She's over there. She's loved me, taking care of me, been my biggest fan, and I just want to say thank you. Appreciate you guys. Go Blue.
please welcome David Sells, the owner of Tennessee Event Specialist, and Elias King from Blue Raider Basketball. Just like our male winner, the Female Newcomer of the Year Award is presented to one female student athlete who has made a major contribution in their sport each year. Here are the nominees for the Female Newcomer of the Year. Female Newcomer of the Year. Adri Rhoda. Rhoda turned in an eye-popping first year by earning CUSA second team honors, CUSA all freshman recognition, and earning CUSA freshman of the week honors six times. Along with setting the 25 point era record for aces in a single season with 67, Rhoda led the Blue Raiders in points, points per set, kills, and aces. Savannah Wheeler, Savannah Wheeler burst onto the stage in her first season as a Lady Raider, earning first team All-Conference USA honors and helping lead Middle Tennessee to one of the best seasons in program history. She surpassed the 1500 career point milestone during her remarkable campaign in helping lead the Lady Raiders to the Conference USA regular season and tournament championships. Agnes Chepkarui. Chep Karui earned second team all CUSA honors after being tabbed the CUSA Freshman of the Meet at the CUSA Championships. Chep Karui finished ninth at the CUSA Championship for the time of 2140.4. Emma Peterson. Starting all but one match for the Blue Raiders in her freshman season, Peterson led the team in both goals and assists. She scored her first career goal in the Conference USA opener at UAB on September 18th. Sana Garakane. Garakane has a winning record and a total of nine wins on court number two this spring. In doubles this spring, Garakane has picked up five victories and the freshman is top three on the team in singles and doubles wins. Shelby Eccles. Eccles has started and played in 41 games this season. The junior transfer from Houston Baptist leads the team in stolen bases and walks ranking second in the CUSA in stolen bases with 23. Female Newcomer of the Year. I'm pleased to announce that the RCA for the Female Newcomer of the Year award goes to Savannah Wheeler. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for this award and uh, especially want to thank my coaches and teammates for building me into the player that I am today and also a big thank you to our administration and our fan base here. You guys were definitely a big part of uh, a success for this season. So thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Blue Raider football alum Brian Kidd. Uh, many of you are recognized for being the best in Conference USA. Others tonight are being recognized for being the best on your team. Then there is the highest recognition of all, which is becoming an All-American. And it's amazing tonight uh, to present that MTSU had seven individuals to attain the status of All-American. Alaba Akintola, 2022 Outdoor. Second team, 100 meters and 200 meters. Yusula Jepkame, 2022 Outdoor. First team, 1,500 meters, and honorable mention, 5,000 meters. Omam Uovi A. Ray, 2022 Outdoor. Second team, high jump. Esther Isa, 2022 Outdoor. First team, triple jump. Abigail Corte, 2022 Outdoor. First team, high jump. Devin Curtis, football, college football news, freshman, All-American. 
Savannah Wheeler, Women's Basketball, HM Mid-Major All-American by World Exposure Report. So congratulations to all our All-Americans. You know, the most important job of a student athlete is to be a student, and that's been very challenging over the last few years. You know, with that in mind, let's recognize those who have achieved a 3.0 GPA and above in the spring and fall of 2022. Folks, give them a nice round of applause, 3-0 and better. Thank you so much. Well, you know, here at the Raiders' Choice Awards, not only do we pass out awards, but, you know, we try to keep you entertained tonight. And uh, over the years, we've had, you know, some great entertainment from student athletes who've shown off some of their talent. So think about it for the next couple of years, guys. If you've got some hidden talent and you want to unleash it on the stage here, we might have a spot for you. Well, some of the folks, my friends here, really know that I like my music and going to shows and things like that. But the one thing I've never done is to sing in public. So guess what? It's not going to happen tonight. So we're going to keep that tradition, unlike any other, just intact. No singing, but, you know, it's always entertaining when our Blue Raiders arrive on the blue carpet. with the MTSU volleyball team. Y'all, these women look amazing. Who took the longest to get ready? I did. <laughs> hey, at least she admitted it. Okay, I am honored. I'm honored to be in the presence of Francisco and Stein right here. Y'all, I'm not even gonna give an introduction real quick. I just need you to look at the hands. They speak for themselves. They speak for themselves. They're waiting on that last one to come. Y'all, how does it feel to four Pete? It's just unreal, unreal. It feels complete right now. You know, we've been uh, we've been searching for it for a while, and uh, right now, like we we're a little still like lost for words, still trying to feel the moment. But it's just we're proud of it. Okay, I'm changing gears a little bit because she's a fashionista of MTSU athletics. Okay, I'm here with women's basketball assistant coach Nina Davis. Nina, tell me about this outfit. You know, I'm going to be honest. I had this outfit sitting in the closet. I was saving it for the right game. The right game never came. So when this event came, I said, hey, this the one. All right. I am here with Steven from the MTSU track and field team. Good evening, Steven. Good evening. All right. Is this your first RCA? Yep, it is. What are you looking forward to? Um, I don't know. Just excited to be here and just, you know, just enjoy the moment, I don't say. So, yeah. How does it feel to be dressed up tonight? Great. I've actually had this clothes in the closet for like months, so it actually feels great to wear it and come out. So. The blue carpet is getting a little rowdy. I, <laughs> I am here with our MTSU track and field team. Ladies, you look beautiful. Thank you. Okay, who took the longest to get ready tonight? <laughs> there was no hesitation. There was no hesitation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ansley Blevins from Blue Raiders Softball.
The Blue Raiders have earned three more team titles this year so far, and there are several more opportunities for hardware yet to come this spring. Not that we'd want to brag at all, but since joining Conference USA, MTSU has claimed 36 team titles, which ties for the most of any school in the league since we entered the Conference USA in 2013. In addition to team titles, we are exceedingly proud of the individual champions that have come out of our programs. This year, six different individual championships were claimed by three different Blue Raider student athletes so far. Now please look as we recognize those individual champions from 2022 to 2023. Alaba Akintola, men's 60 meters, men's 200 meters at CUSA Indoor Championships, men's 100 meter and 200 meter at CUSA Outdoor Championships. Estherisa, women's triple jump at CUSA Indoor Championships. Abigail Quartang, women's high jump at CUSA Outdoor Championships. A special thank you to all BRAA members and other donors who have contributed to these championships by helping our student athletes have all the resources they need to succeed. You know, it's time for now for three awards that are chosen by our fans. The first of those is the Play of the Year, and it's presented by Deputy Athletic Director Lee DeLeon and Jackson Burns from Men's Track and Field. We have very talented athletes here, so seeing incredible plays is not a surprise. There was no shortage of great plays for fans to consider for Play of the Year. Play of the Year. Salem Wood, football. In MTSU's upset win over number 25, Miami, Wood, from his defensive end position, batted a pass at the line of scrimmage, then plucked it out of the air and raced 15 yards for a touchdown. That play set the tone for a 24-10 halftime advantage for the Blue Raiders. Chase coming in to DJ England Chisholm at Miami. Football. After Miami pulled to within 31-17 in the third quarter, the Hurricanes had a fourth down pass play at the MTSU one-yard line that Teldrick Ross broke up. The Blue Raiders took over at the two-yard line, and on the first play, Chase Cunningham checked out of the called play and hit a streaky DJ England Chisholm down the left sideline for a 98-yard touchdown pass. That pass equaled the longest in school history and virtually thwarted any hopes of a Miami comeback. Jacoby Thomas, football. With MTSU trailing late in the fourth quarter at FIU, Jacoby Thomas picked off a pass with 2.50 left to play and returned it 28 yards for the winning touchdown. The victory secured win number seven and a guaranteed spot in postseason play. MTSU Volleyball versus WKU, third set, 12-12. On a 30-second rally that got a combined million views on social media platforms, junior Megan Turner made an insane one-handed dig out of bounds to help get the ball back over the net, which ended with senior Kayla Henley blocking an all-American outside hitter from nationally ranked WKU. Tasia Frazier, soccer versus Austin P. Late in the first half, the speedy winger made a run into the top of the 18-yard box, where Lauren Sponstra found the sprinting Frazier at the perfect position. The forward from Brampton, Canada flicked her foot for a first half volley, chipping the governor's keeper and giving MTSU a 2-0 lead and Frazier her first career goal, one that would ultimately prove to be the deciding goal in Aston Roden's 200th career win. Francisco Roca, tennis versus rice. Roca's incredible save on a ball that floated just over Oscar Brostrom Paulson's head gave the Blue Raiders number one pairing the momentum to take a 6-3 win to start off doubles play. Roca sprinted hard over to his left shoulder and a ball destined for the corner and twisted his body to forehand a ball while he was sliding to the ground. The ball landed just in bounds on the right side of the net, prompting a loud pop from the home fans and a look of disbelief on Roca's face as he sat in the corner. Ksenia Malashka, women's basketball versus Louisiana Tech. Ksenia Malashka hit a shot with three seconds left to play at Louisiana Tech to give the Lady Raiders a 61-59 win. 
Malashka, who equaled her career high with 27 points, also blocked the Bulldogs' game-tying attempt as time expired. Cameron Weston, men's basketball versus Charlotte. Weston hit a step-back three-pointer in the final seconds of the Blue Raiders Conference USA quarterfinal victory over Charlotte. His third made three-pointer of the night gave MTSU a come-from-behind win to advance to the tournament semifinals. Lily Sophie Schmidt, women's tennis versus Austin P. Lily Sophie Schmidt's clinching match point was crucial in turning around the season for the Blue Raiders after losing their first two matches on the road. In what would be the clinching match, Schmidt lost the first of two sets, but fought back to win the third set tiebreak, 7-6. That match point secured the Blue Raiders' first win of the season and catapulted them to wins in six straight home matches. JT Maybury, baseball versus WKU. Tied with WKU 6-6 in the eighth inning of a Sunday series rubber match, JT Maybury singled to drive in the winning runs on a 2-2 count. The Blue Raiders held on to win 8-6 to win the home series and would go on to defeat WKU in five of six total games against their rivals. Laura Mueller, softball versus FAU. The Blue Raiders held a one-run lead over FAU 2-1, going into the top of the seventh after an play of the year. Salem Wood, football. In MTSU's upset win over number 25, Miami, Wood, from his defensive end position, batted a pass at the line of scrimmage, then plucked it out of the air and raced 15 yards for a touchdown. That play set the tone for a 24-10 halftime advantage for the Blue Raiders. See all surprise. Um, as voted on by the Blue Raider Nation, your Raiders Choice of the Award Player of the Year goes to <laughs> Laura Miller. I just want to say thank you to God for giving me the ability to play and thank you to my family, my friends, my teammates, and really thankful that Coach Breeden said I didn't have to wear heels tonight. So thank you. The award for female breakout performer is presented by a couple of Blue Raider baseballers, alum Chuck Akers and a current Blue Raider, DJ Wright. There were several breakthrough performers that drew the attention of fans, players, and coaches alike. Their breakthrough oh. contributed. Woo. Here are the nominees for female breakout performer of the year. Let's go. Female breakout performer of the year. Kayla Henley. Henley earned All-Conference USA second team honors after ranking first in the conference in total digs, while also ranking second in hitting percentage and digs per set among opposite right side hitters. The Little River South Carolina native saw improvements in every facet of her game, most notably adding over 100 points to her hitting percentage from the season ago. Hannah Suter. Suter played and started in net for all 17 matches for the Blue Raiders this fall, played in all but 60 minutes of the season. The senior finished fourth in Conference USA in overall saves with 62. Love star Alexis. Alexis made the jump from playing number three singles and doubles last year to number one singles and doubles this season. She earned Conference USA Athlete of the Week for the first time in her career and became the first player under head coach Teo Bailey Duvall to earn the honor. Amaya Harris. Harris is having an outstanding season on the diamond, batting 360 with 27 RBI. Her 27 RBI rank eighth in the CUSA, along with her 360 batting average that also ranks seventh. Agnes Chepkarui. 
Chep Karui earned second team all CUSA honors after being tabbed the CUSA freshman of the meet at the CUSA championships. Chep Karui finished ninth at the CUSA championship for the time of 2140.4. Female Breakout Performer of the Year. The RCA for female, female Breakout Performer goes to Kayla Henley. like to thank God because without him I wouldn't be here today. Um, I'd like to thank my family for always supporting me. Um, I'd like to thank my coaching staff and Raison for always pushing me on and off the court. Lastly, I'd like to thank my teammates over here for just always seeing the best in me. Love y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next presenters, Blue Raider Athletic Association President Dana Womack and from our women's tennis team that was undefeated at home this year, Muskan Gupta. Becoming a breakout performer doesn't happen by accident. It comes from hours of hard work in the off season and dedication to bettering their skill set. All of you have put in the work, but these performances are the ones that stood out for their breakout performance this year. Male Breakout Performer of the Year. Trey Fluella. After waiting his turn behind Reed Blankenship, Fluellen shined for one of the most disruptive defenses in the country. Fluellen, who started just once in 2021, started all 13 games and led the team in tackles with a personal best 104, while also adding two interceptions and eight pass breakups. Elias King. King set new career highs in virtually every meaningful statistical category in 2022-23. The Atlanta native more than doubled his career totals in points, rebounds, made field goals, made three-pointers, assists, steals, blocks, and minutes played, leading MTSU with 56 made three-pointers. Marcus Vargin. Vargin has two top 10 finishes and two Conference USA Player of the Week honors in his first season of competition as a Blue Raider. As of March 19th, he holds a 73.1 stroke average in 15 rounds on the season. Oscar Brostrom Holson has been ranked as high as number 60 in the nation in singles and number 23 in doubles in 2023. The sophomore had an incredible run at the ITA All-Americans, moving from one section to the next of the draw in both singles and doubles, being the first player under Coach Borendam to do so. Briggs Rudder. As of April 17th, Rudder is one of five Blue Raiders with an average north of 300 at 304. Rudder has an 836 OPS and was a combined 5 for 10 in MTSU's Road Series Sweep at WKU. Male Breakout Performer of the Year. I'm proud to present the RCA for Male Breakout Performer, and it goes to Elias King. First off, I would like to thank God and my teammates and my coaches. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. And I would also like to say thanks to everybody for being along with me this year. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Earlier, we recognized those student athletes who achieved a 3.0. Now let's recognize those who achieved a 3.5 GPA or above in the spring and fall of 2022.
am here with the Teldrick Ross from NTSU football. All right, how y'all doing? How everybody doing tonight? I, got, I can't stop looking at the chain, though. Tell me about the chain. Uh, it's sentimental because, like, I'm, I'm really into cars, so uh, I drive a 392 SRT, and so I call myself SRT Ross, so I had to get it on the chain. All right, I am here with Tasia and Emma from Women's Soccer, two nominees tonight. We've got one right here for Newcomer of the Year and Tasia for Play of the Year. Girls, how does it feel to be nominated tonight? Well, it was a surprise for me. I actually found out from one of my friends on the volleyball team, um, but I'm just thankful to be, you know, recognized for one of my goals earlier this year. What about you, Emma? Yeah, no, I feel honored. It's super special, and I had my ups and downs this season, so I wasn't prepared for it, but I'm thankful and happy about it. All right, I got, I got a random question for y'all. I know y'all are in the locker room. Y'all listening to music. Who on the team got the best dance moves? Uh, probably Brett Coker. Brett Coker. Yeah, that's good. That's or, good. or Jackson Galloway. Yeah, one of those. Or two. Jackson Galloway. All right, they're giving the boys some shout outs around here. Hey, Lanika. What's up? Hey, would you characterize your speed as explosive or incendiary? What'd you say? Uh, hold on. What'd you ask? I think, I think that, that answers it. it. Incendiary. You need anything else? Thanks, you're good. We have our answer. Uh, how do you spell? Did you say something? Is this one of those I before E words? It's time to find out the game or event of the year. So please welcome Jason Powers, Senior Vice President of Administration of Ascend Federal Credit Union and Campbell Cavisto from Women's Soccer. Many of you have had the opportunity to, to experience that special moment in your athletic careers. These special games are the ones that you will still talk about when you come back to campus to reminisce with your teammates. This year, Blue Raider fans had lots to choose from when they voted for game or event of the year. Game event of the year. Football upset win at number 25, Miami. Middle Tennessee football took the ball away early and kept putting the ball in the end zone late. Blasting past number 25, Miami, 45 to 31 at Hard Rock Stadium for the program's first ever win against a team ranked in the top 25. QB Chase Cunningham completed 16 of 25 passes for 408 yards with three touchdowns. While wide receiver DJ England Chisholm hauled in two passes for 169 yards and two scores. Football Hawaii Bowl win over San Diego State. Middle Tennessee football fought and clawed back into the game at the Easy Post Hawaii Bowl, securing the win behind the clutch foot of Zeke Rankin as the sophomore kicker's 37-yard field goal pushed MTSU to a 25-23 win over San Diego State at the Clarence T.C. Ching Complex. The win secured back-to-back -back bowl wins for MTSU for the first time in school history. Volleyball win over undefeated Boston College. The Middle Tennessee volleyball team took down an undefeated Boston College squad for the first match of the Red Storm Invitational, hosted by St. John's, with the Blue Raiders winning three straight sets to snap Boston College's 10-match win streak to start the season in four sets. Led by freshman Adri Rhoda's career-high 19 kills on a 378 attack percentage, the win marked the first time Middle Tennessee has defeated a Power 5 team since 2014 when the Blue Raiders upset Arkansas. Women's outdoor track and field team places 25th at 2022 NCAA Championships. Head coach Keith Roman led the women to a 25th place finish at the meet, the first time the women's team had placed in the top 25 at the outdoor meet. Abigail Corte finished as runner-up in the women's high jump, earning first-team All-American honors. One of three Blue Raiders to earn such a designation, including Esther Issa for her top eight finish in the women's triple jump, 
and Yusula Chipkame earned first in the 1500 meter. Women's basketball, upset of number 18 Louisville. The Middle Tennessee women's basketball program dominated the middle two quarters, trouncing number 18 Louisville 39-18 in the middle 20 minutes of the game to romp to a 67-49 win at the Murphy Center. The win marked the Lady Raiders' first win over a ranked opponent since December 28, 2011, when MTSU knocked off number six, Kentucky, 70 to 58 at the Murphy Center. It's the 11th win in program history over a ranked team, fourth under head coach Rick Insell, and the sixth ranked win inside of the Murphy Center. Savannah Wheeler led all scorers with 23 points, shooting 50% from the floor while Courtney Whitson earned a double-double, scoring 16 points, including four three-pointers, while grabbing 10 rebounds. Men's basketball upset of number 25, FAU. Blue Raider men's basketball defeated number 25, Florida Atlantic, 74-70 on February 16th at the Murphy Center. The win was MTSU's first over a ranked opponent in the 50-year history of the Glass House, and the Owls did not lose again until the Final Four. The Blue Raiders led for 29 minutes and 30 seconds, overcoming an early 10-0 run by the Owls. MTSU forced 15 FAU turnovers while coughing the ball up just nine times. Cameron Weston's 16 points and seven rebounds were both team highs as four Blue Raiders scored in double figures and five recorded at least five rebounds. Men's tennis defeats number 19 Duke. The Blue Raiders notched their first win in program history over the Blue Devils, winning a clinching match on court five to take the win in the opening round of the ITA Indoor Championships. After winning the doubles point, MTSU would claim victories on court four thanks to Andre Hora and on court six thanks to Pavel Modal. Freshman Marcel Kamrowski would put Duke away, winning the second set tiebreak to win the 4-2 match, sending MTSU onto the round of 32. Women's tennis defeats WKU. MTSU fought back from losing the doubles point and the first singles match to claim a 4-3 victory over the Hilltoppers, continuing an undefeated streak to start the season at the Adams Tennis Center. After the Lady Toppers took a point on court five to give them a 3-2 lead, Muskin Gupta tallied a three-set win on court number three to tie the match at 3-3. All eyes were on court number one as the reigning Conference USA Athlete of the Week, Love Star Alexis, clinched the win for the Blue Raiders in two sets. Baseball at WKU, Middle Tennessee jumped out to a 5-1 lead in Bowling Green, and James Sells had his third save in as many games as the Blue Raiders clinched a three-game series sweep over the Hilltoppers. Game Event of the Year. As voted on by the fans, the 2022 Raiders Choice Award for Game or Event of the Year goes to football versus number 25, Miami. First off, I just want to thank uh, God for providing me and my teammates with this opportunity. Um, we just want to thank the coaches, the trainers, uh, the equipment managers, the uh, media crew, and everybody behind the scenes that uh, give us the opportunity to uh, play our best and do our best. Um, lastly, I just want to thank uh, all, like, all the fans and everybody who voted for us. Uh, without y'all, we, 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 would, we wouldn't know where we'd be. Thank y'all. I love y'all. Football leads the league in shades tonight, no question about it. Well, after a couple of years hiatus due to the pandemic, we're extremely excited for the return of the Community Service Award, formerly known as the Director's Cup. To make the presentation, please welcome Associate Athletic Director Hans Mailbranch and your Student Athlete Advisory Council President from Blue Raider Softball, Claire Woods.
One of the best parts about my job is watching our student athletes develop into outstanding young men and women during their time here at Middle Tennessee. As a university and as an athletic department, we put a big emphasis on serving the community that serves us so well. Our coaches are very competitive, and this award means a lot to them and also to each of our teams. Before we introduce our winner in the category, special recognition goes to the Lady Raider volleyball team for their work to assist Smyrna High School volleyball standout Janae Edmondson after her highly publicized accident that left her with both legs amputated. The Lady Raiders organized a camp that raised $4,000 for Janae's GoFundMe account and showed up as a team to support her at her first public appearance after her injuries at a community event in Smyrna High School. And here's the happy ending, or maybe it's just the beginning of this story. Janae will be coming to MTSU this fall on a manager's scholarship with our volleyball team. For this award, each team turns in their community service hours throughout the year, and now the results have been tabulated. We are so proud to announce that the 2023 Raiders Choice Community Service Award goes to the Lady Raiders soccer team. So I just want to say thank you for this award. Um, as important as it is to us to serve each other on the field, it's even more important to serve the community off the field. So um, just thank you guys, and um, go Blue Raiders. <laughs> For our next presentation, please welcome Ed Arning from MTSU Marketing and Communications and from Women's Basketball, Jalen Gregory. As I hope all of us know, the official mascot of a university is an important rallying point for not only athletics, but the entire community. When our mascot lightning appears at a sporting event, university function, city festival, or special event, it sends a signal that we at MTSU are engaged and supportive of what's taking place. Lightning also rallies our supporters and adds joy to the festivities. When we learned that Lightning from the cheer squad would not be able to accompany our teams to the Conference USA tournament in Frisco, Texas, and in the NCAA tournament in Durham, North Carolina, two students stepped forward to ensure MTSU's mascot would be part of the game day excitement. Evan Thurber, a percussionist in our amazing band of blue, was the first to step forward. He helped Lightning participate in the men's and women's basketball games in the Conference USA Tournament while continuing to play the drums for the pet band. Here's a few shots of Evan as Lightning. Evan just started this week on a one-year gig as a musician for SeaWorld in Dubai and can't be with us, but let's give him a round of applause tonight. Next. Izzy Gutierrez, our student social media producer in marketing and communications, followed the women's basketball team to Durham. It was her first experience as Lightning, and she did an amazing job. Here's a few seconds of Izzy as Lightning. Izzy is with us tonight. Please join me in thanking her for representing our university.
<laughs> you know, when you walk the blue carpet for the Writer's Choice Awards, always remember the camera's eye is never far away. All right, I'm here with Mr. Cool Calm Collective, Cam Weston from Men's Basketball. What's up? What's going on with y'all, man? How y'all doing? All right, Cam, you nominated tonight. Play of the year. I'm a little biased. Uh -oh. The buzzer beater on Charlotte. I was there. Okay. I was there. Tell me what you was thinking during that moment. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wasn't thinking nothing. You know what I'm saying? I was really just playing the game, you know what I'm saying? Just doing what I had to do. I just let it fly, and it just came out good for me. All right, you cleaned up nice. What's the inspiration behind the outfit? Is that the inspiration? I ain't gonna lie to you. I was, I was really just like, you know, let me find some quit for the day for him. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay a little clean. I'm, they gonna do an eye. I don't know, y'all tell me. See, cool, calm, and collective, keeping it clean and simple. Good luck tonight. God bless you. Appreciate y'all. Okay, it was very hard to track down one of the most important people in the athletic department. I'm only saying that because he's my boss. Director of Athletics, Chris Massaro. Good evening. Good evening, Chelsea. Isn't this great? This is amazing. Like, it, it really is. It makes all of our hard work worth it. What does it mean to you for this event every year? Well, it's just so much fun to honor everybody's hard work. And these people, the, the students and the student athletes, represented us so well all the, through the course of the year and all the championships, all the great games, all the hard work. And to, to bring them all together in one big celebration at the end of the year is a lot of fun. So what is one thing you would say to our student athletes as they wrap up their semester? Thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, we understand how hard it is and the hard work that you do. And w we really appreciate the way you represent the Blue Raiders and everything that you do. He couldn't have said it any better. Let's go Blue. Recently got a new partner for my project. Let's go check out what he's working on. Hey, Lightning, you working on that project? <laughs> you know, the word student is the first part of student athlete. MTSU has a great tradition of being champions in sports and in the classroom. To present our Team GPA Awards, please welcome a member of the MTSU Board of Trustees and faculty rep to athletics, Mr. Rick Cottle, and from Blue Raider football, defensive back Teldrick Ross. Each of our student athletes work really hard individually and cooperatively to contribute to their team's success. We are fortunate at MTSU to have coaches that set up their programs for the students to succeed. The RCA for the highest team GPA in the spring 2022 is women's golf. Three point eight nine, three point eight nine one GPA. I'd like to thank Todd for overseeing women's golf. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Counts for helping us during study hall, uh, thanking our coaches for pushing us to perform on and off the golf course. And lastly, thank God. To God be the glory. That was for spring 2022 and for fall 2022. Team GPA award goes to with a 3.65 GPA, women's volleyball.
would like to thank you, Todd, for overseeing our team also and a lot, our coaches also for allowing us to leave practice early to go study and do what we need to do to get the best grades we can. Thank you. The Blue Raider Nation has spoken with their votes for performance of the year. Here to make the presentation are Melanie Brown, new home sales professional at Old South Properties, and Oscar brostrom Polson of the Blue Raider men's tennis team. It is a special night when a player has risen to the challenge and puts together an incredible performance. It is so fun to watch. There are many great performances this year, and one of those will soon be named Performance of the Year. Performance of the Year. Quindarius Dunnigan, football, making his first collegiate start at defensive end against Colorado State on the road. Dunnigan recorded three and a half tackles for loss, including two and a half sacks and a pass breakup to earn CUSA and TSWA Defensive Player of the Week honors. Both statistics were career highs for the sophomore. Jordan Ferguson, football, Ferguson was making plays on both sides of the ball on his way to earning Hawaii Bowl MVP honors. The senior had five tackles, including a tackle for loss, a pass breakup, and an interception to lead a defense that forced five turnovers. On offense, Ferguson scored the team's first touchdown of the game when he hauled in an eight-yard touchdown pass to help close the gap on a 14-0 Aztec lead to start the game. Zinglin Wood, football. Wood had a career best two sacks to go with two tackles for loss, a fumble recovery, and an interception he turned into a touchdown. His first career score on defense, giving MTSU a quick 10-0 lead just five minutes into the game at number 25 Miami. Wood went on to earn the Walter Camp and the Bronco Nagurski National Defensive Player of the Week honors. Chase Cunningham, football, in a must-win situation, QB Chase Cunningham shined on senior day by leading MTSU to a key win over FAU. Cunningham threw for a career high 448 yards on 40 of 54 passing to go with five touchdowns. The 448 passing yards went down as the second most in school history. And the TD passes were also the second highest total in a single game. Adri Rhoda, volleyball. Freshman Adri Rhoda hit home a career-high 19 kills on a 378 attack percentage against an undefeated Power 5 team in Boston College in Queens, New York. Rhoda also notched four service aces, one being the match winner and a career-high three block assists. The win marked the first time Middle Tennessee has beaten a Power 5 team since 2014. Abigail Cortang, track and field. Quartang led the women to a 25th place finish at the 2022 NCAA Championships, the first time the women's team had placed in the top 25 at the outdoor meet, and just the second time they've ever placed at the NCAA Championships. With a runner-up finish in the women's high jump, Quartang became the first Blue Raider female to earn first team All-American status in the high jump event. Lauren Spenstra, soccer. Spanstra logged three assists against Austin P on September 4th. Her three assists went to three different goal scorers as the Blue Raiders took a lead at the 10 minute mark and never looked back in a 3-1 win. The win was also Aston Roden's 200th career victory at MTSU. Savannah Wheeler, women's basketball. Savannah Wheeler played her best game in a Lady Raider uniform at home against WKU scoring a season high 37 points on 11 of 16 shooting while making 13 of 15 free throw attempts as MTSU scored a season high 94 points. The junior guard drew 12 fouls from the Lady Toppers, dishing out four assists and nabbing a team high two steals. Cameron Weston, men's basketball. Weston scored 22 points, including the game-winning three-pointer in the closing seconds in the CUSA quarterfinals against Charlotte. The Albany, Georgia native was eight for 13 from the floor, including a three for five mark from three-point range and a three for three from the free throw line to go along with three rebounds, two steals, and an assist. 
Weston's 22 points were the most by any Blue Raider on the year. Owen Stamper, men's golf. The junior from Scottsville, Kentucky, picked up his first career tournament victory at the Lake Las Vegas Intercollegiate from February 27th through March 1st. Stamper shot a career low 205, 11 under, with rounds of 69, 69, and 67 for his third top two finish of the season. His 18 birdies were the most among the 96 player field. Marcel Komroski, men's tennis. Komroski has clinched two of the biggest wins this season for the Blue Raiders, but none bigger than his first against number 19 Duke, who was ranked as high as 12th this season in the first round of the ITA Indoor Nationals. Komroski battled Duke's Ferris Khan to a two-set victory to give the Blue Raiders their first win over Duke in program history. Lily Sophie Schmidt, women's tennis. Lily Sophie Schmidt had arguably one of the best performances on the tennis court this season against Bellarmine. The junior tallied a 6-1 doubles win on court three, on court number three. In singles, Schmidt was in battle on court number four, where she lost her first set 6-4, but bounced back to win the next 6-3 and then 6-0. Her victory would clinch the win for the Blue Raiders. Cameron Karsich, softball. Cameron Karsich threw the first no-hitter for MTSU since 2018, and just the 13th in program history. In her debut outing in Murfreesboro, the Murray State transfer held Appalachian State to zero hits in a five-inning run rule win. 10-0, Jaden Ham, baseball. Jaden Ham tossed a complete game one hit shutout as the Blue Raiders knocked off Evansville 2-0. Ham also had 11 strikeouts. Performance of the year. The Raiders Choice Awards performance of the year was definitely a fan's favorite. And the winner is Chase Cunningham. Chase is unable to be here uh, in person tonight, uh, but he uh, had a video uh, which we're going to play right now. So give it up for Chase. What's up, everybody? Chase Cunningham here. Um, just want to say thank you guys for all the support and everything throughout the year. You know, first, I want to congratulate all the other people that were nominated for this award. Um, those are some re remarkable performances that I saw in the video, and um, you know, just thank you guys for everything. This award wouldn't be possible without my teammates and everything, so this is just an extension of them. Um, hope everybody's having a great night. Thank you guys. Go Blue. For our next presentation, please welcome Senior Associate Athletic Director and Senior Women's Administrator, Diane Turnham, and from Women's Track and Field, Akira Benton. Good evening. It's our pleasure to present the Make a Difference Award this afternoon. Um, you know, there are so many people in our university staff and our community who uh, step up to make a difference in our student athletes' lives and our coaches' lives every single day. The impact that they make on our Blue Raiders is uh, phenomenal. And sometimes it's just a simple act of kindness. Other times it's uh, something that the whole team supports. But this year, we shine the spotlight on two individuals who have made a difference in the lives of untold numbers of student athletes during their tenure here at MTSU. Please watch the screen. Dr. Sells and uh, Ms. Sudak have both been uh, a tremendous um, addition to our university for many, many years. They have uh, provided significant leadership. Uh, they have been engaged throughout the university as we work uh, towards making this a campus that is warm and welcoming to our students. With regards to the athletic department, um, I think one of the reasons why our uh, sports team uh, have one of the highest uh, APR, which is the academic performance of student athletes, really in the country, is really due to their leadership working with their colleagues in the uh, Athletic Enhancement Center uh, at 
advising operation. Uh, and also their presence um, as it relates to attending various athletic events and showing support for the athletic department. As their careers expanded at Middle, so did their help with athletics. You know, now that, that Deb is our vice president in charge of student enrollment and so many other things, uh, she, she stepped up on so many levels. Her whole life has been about helping students, and our campus is a better campus today because of some of the things she did. Sarah came up through housing and then now as Dean of Students, uh, you know, I, I can think of so many other ways that she's also helped. I can't tell you the great lengths she's gone to to pull ARA and our coaches together for preseason meals, once again at a time when all the other students aren't here. How do we feed these student athletes and how do we make sure they get what they need? So meetings with ARA, meetings with coaches, pulling the groups together, making sure we have uh, the time, the place, uh, and the quality of food that we needed. Can't think of uh, any two well-deserving ladies uh, of receiving this Make a Difference Award in our athletic department, especially for our student athletes. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Sales, and I want to thank Sarah Sudak, not only for looking after our student athletes, but also uh, looking after our coaches, and especially in the game of football, and what I do for a living of operations and uh, player development. They've been very helpful to me and I wish them the best in their life after a job. I think one of the best things uh, that can be said about a teacher, a coach, an educator, an administrator, is that they care about their kids, about their players, about their students. And uh, Deb and Sarah exemplified that to a T. Uh, they cared about the students here at, at Middle Tennessee State University. I appreciate you, and I wish you guys nothing but the best in your retirement, and uh, much success and happiness uh, the rest of the way. To Deb and Sarah, I wish you all the best in the next phase of your career, in your life. Uh, you have made a tremendous difference uh, on this campus during your tenure. You have actually are leaving a legacy uh, that will live on uh, for this university and our students for years to come. When you talk about making a difference, you have to think of Deb Sales and Sarah Sudak, and uh, I want to wish them the best of luck in their future. Uh, I don't know that they can be replaced, but they're truly going to be missed, and we hope that we get to see them again anytime the Blue Raiders are playing anywhere near them. Uh, we hope they will always feel free to come back because they are true blue and we are blessed to have them in student affairs. Deb and Sarah, I thank you for your contributions. I, I thank you for what you've done for the athletic department. And when I go to the events, I don't look up and I, I, I can't remember an event where I haven't seen one of you guys at it. They are there to support the students. They're there to support the craft. They're there to support the student athletes. And that message rings loud and clear. And so, Deb and Sarah, I, I thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's an unspeakable volume of time that you've devoted to athletics. And, and on behalf of the student athletes and the whole athletic department, thank you so much. Uh, it's not gone unnoticed, and we treasure all your contributions. The Raiders' Choice Award for Making a Difference goes to Dr. Deb Sells and Dean Sarah Sudak. As usual, I'll speak for Sarah and, and me both. Uh, we're very surprised, very grateful. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with our student athletes. We would be remiss if we didn't mention that we're just two people. And there are hundreds and hundreds of folks that come to work every day here to support our student athletes. And you never see them. And they're the people in accounting that make sure that your plane flights and buses and 
hotel rooms get paid for. They're the people in ARA that make sure you get fed. They're the people in housing that make sure you have a dorm room if that's what you need. They're the people in academic advising and the Enhancement Center that make sure you stay on track to be students first. Uh, they're the instructors that schedule special exams for you or make up uh, assignments for you because you're at matches or at games. There are hundreds of people behind the scenes that care about you and are so devoted to your success, and we're just two of them. Uh, and it has been uh, really the, a great pleasure on our part to be able to work with you all, and we're very proud of all that you do. So thanks so much. What she said. <laughs> My name is Jackson Burns, and I run track. My name is Jared Coleman Jones, and I play basketball. My name is Kaylee Oscarson, and I play volleyball. I'm Jalen Gregory, and I play basketball. My name is Lauren Spanstra, and I play soccer. Today, we're at the student union trying to clip on balloons to unsuspecting passerbyers. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Walk faster. Oh, she lost him. She lost him. Oh, Welcome. Yep, there she goes. Yo, go, oh, go, 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 Where's my water? We're down to the final few awards of the night, and for the first of those, please welcome Director of Athletics Chris Massaro and MTSU Senior Advisor for Veterans and Leadership Initiatives, Lieutenant General Keith Huber. Thank you guys, and we're winding it down, and so it's our honor to, to award the Female Athlete of the Year, and it's a prestigious award given to someone who's contributed to her team's success, respects the game, is a good teammate, and a respected leader. It's given to an athlete that stands out amongst her teammates, and as you look at this year's nominees, you'll find that each woman possesses these qualities. So let's have a look at the video. Female Athlete of the Year. Kayla Henley. Henley earned all Conference USA second team honors after ranking first in the conference in total digs, while also ranking second in hitting percentage and digs per set among opposite right side hitters. The Little River, South Carolina native saw improvements in every facet of her game, most notably adding over 100 points to her hitting percentage from a season ago. Abigail Corte. In her lone outdoor season with the Blue Raiders in 2022, Cortang earned first team All-American honors in the high jump, was first team All-Conference in the high jump, and won the high jump championship at the CUSA Outdoor Meet, where she won CUSA Women's Field Athlete of the Year. She was the national runner-up in the women's high jump for the mark of 1.92 meters at the NCAA Championships, tying her Ghana national record and setting the MTSU program record. Caroline Manley. Manley started and played every minute of the 17-game season for the Blue Raiders. 
finishing 2022 with 4,496 consecutive minutes across 49 matches, dating back to late in her freshman year, never missing a start in four years. She was named to the Academic All-Conference USA second team in 2023. Taylor Redlin. Edlin leads the Blue Raiders in scoring at a career low mark of 74.2 through April 15th. She owns four top 10 finishes in her last five tournaments, including a second place finish at the Reynolds Lake Oconee Invitational. Savannah Wheeler. Savannah Wheeler burst onto the stage in her first season as a Lady Raider, earning first team All-Conference USA honors and helping lead Middle Tennessee to one of the best seasons in program history. She surpassed the 1,500 career point milestone during her remarkable campaign in helping lead the Lady Raiders to the Conference USA regular season and tournament championships. Muskin Gupta. Gupta's 11 wins during the spring season are the most singles wins in her career and ranks as the second most singles wins on the team. The senior leads the team in total doubles wins this spring with nine. Laura Miller. A CUSA Player of the Week award winner leads Conference USA with a 425 batting average. She leads the Blue Raiders in batting average, slugging percentage, runs scored, hits, RBI, home runs, stolen bases, doubles, and total bases. Female Athlete of the Year. What an incredible group of ladies. My personal congratulations to each of you on your very significant success. The 2023 Female Athlete of the Year goes to Abigail K. Wartang. nervous but I'm sure it's not just me thank you guys very much for being here this evening um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my coach Andrew Usu he's really done great for me uh, both while I was still competing and even post uh, my NCAA um, uh, career I'd like to thank a few coaches uh, coach Baski coach Alex I usually call him Florida uh, coach Ote I really appreciate you uh, coach Vroman coach Bonner um, Coach Hicks, I see you. You guys are usually the first to show up wherever either it's been on the field or in the gym. And the last to leave, we see all of that. My teammates, AK, Kyle, Esther, Lenika, you guys were really amazing last year. Our team uh, motto last year was Toyota, let's go places. I'm sure we did. Um, and lastly, I thank me for not disappointing all those that actually believed in me. So thank you. Have a great evening. Ladies and gentlemen, joining Chris Massaro on stage to present our next award, please welcome Catherine Caudill of the Lady Raider golf team. The male athlete of the year is the highest honor for athletic accomplishment for a male Blue Raider. The male athlete of the year will embody the same quality as our female winners. He respects the game, is a respected leader, and is a great teammate and stands out amongst his peers. Here are the nominees, and I think you'll agree, an incredible set of, uh, of performances this year. So here are our nominees for this prestigious honor. Male Athlete of the Year. Jordan Ferguson. Ferguson was a first team all CUSA selection after ending the year with a career best 68 tackles to go with the team highs in tackles for loss, 17, and sacks, nine. 
Ferguson went on to earn Hawaii Bowl MVP honors and later garnered Hula Bowl MVP honors. Alaba Akintola. Akintola turned in a phenomenal outdoor season in 2022 by earning first team all CUSA honors in the 100 and 200 meters and was voted the CUSA Outdoor Championship Male Track Performer of the Meet. At the 2023 CUSA Indoor Championships, Akintola won the 60 meter and the 200 meter races, setting a new CUSA championship record in the 200 meter race with a 20.59 time, going on to earn CUSA Performer of the Meet honors. Owen Stamper. Stamper entered the 2022-23 season with one career top five finish through his first two years. This year, he has finished in the top two three times, including a win in the Lake Las Vegas Intercollegiate, where he set a personal best with a 54-hole score of 205, 11 under. Stigen Slump. Slump has been the highest ranked singles player in the CUSA since ITA individual rankings were released on February 8th. The graduate student has a singles record of 14 and six at the number one court, and his doubles record is 15 and four at the number two court, tallying a total of seven ranked wins in singles this spring, which has helped the Blue Raiders defeat five ranked opponents this season. JT Mabry. In his fourth season with the Blue Raiders, the senior from Chesterfield, Missouri, has started each game at second base as of April 17th. At 357, Mabry is the second leading hitter in the everyday lineup and has also contributed defensively with a .970 fielding percentage. Male Athlete of the Year. All of these nominees had phenomenal years, but one rose to the top. This recipient is a very special student athlete. Our 2023 Male Athlete of the Year is Stein Slump. I would like to thank uh, MTSU and MT Athletics for uh, allowing me to wear the jersey for the past uh, five years. It's, it's been a true honor. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Coach Jimmy Borndame for um, you know, being my mentor for the last five years. You've uh, truly made me a better person both on and off the court. And last but not least, uh, my teammates uh, you know, for pushing me every single day and making me a better person. Uh, it's been an honor playing alongside every single one of you. All right, go blue, thank you. Academic perfection is considered when one achieves a 4.0 grade point average. Through hard work, dedication, and lots of study hours, several student athletes have achieved a 4.0 over the past year.
following student athletes achieved a 4.0 in both the spring 22 and fall 22 semesters. From baseball, Nick Jones, Eston Snyder, Jalen Works. From football, Devin Curtis, Tyler Falvey, Nick Vadiato. From women's golf, Molly Bevelar, Abigail Lee. From soccer, Madison Franz, Jordan Imes, Sasha Nielsen, Hannah Suter, Leah Zawalski. From softball, Abby Shoulders. From women's tennis, Muskan Gupta. From volleyball, Taylor Isert. Michaela Wright. From men's track and field and cross country, Justin Eugene. All right, um, we're gonna, this is always kind of a fun thing. We're gonna bring up the house lights and let you know that if you were in the 3-0 group earlier, stand up. If you're 3.0 in that first group, I know some of you are here, so go ahead and stand up. Next, if you're in the 3.5 group and your name came across the screen, go ahead and stand up. Yeah. Okay, if you were in the 4.0s that just came up, you all stand up too. How about that? Let's give them all a great round of applause. Our academic champions. And a note to all of you who won 4.0, uh, there are 4.0 awards in the lobby. Then you can pick those up. Uh, Todd would ask that you please pick those up. If you don't get them tonight, uh, he'll have to carry them back to the office, and he'd rather you take them home with you tonight. All right, our final awards of the night are the True Blue President's Award. In his tenure as president at MTSU, Dr. Sidney McPhee has provided unwavering leadership, and for that, and his support of Blue Raider Athletics, we all say a big thank you. On August 1st, Dr. McPhee will celebrate his 22nd anniversary as president at Middle Tennessee State University. Well, as we mentioned earlier in the show, Dr. McPhee is unable to be with us this evening, but we are very proud to have our first lady making these presentations. Please welcome the first lady of MTSU, Dr. Dr. Elizabeth McPhee. Wow, just coming to this stage, I just earned a doctorate. <laughs> and I don't have one, that's wonderful. <laughs> Presenting these awards is a highlight for us. These nominees are truly exceptional. These awards really take everything into account. Athletic success, academic success, community service, and though all those intangibles that embody the true blue spirit. Here are the nominees for the Male True Blue President's Award. True Blue President's Award. Francisco Roca. Roca, while majoring in economics with a minor in business administration at MTSU, is seeking his third President's Award at the RCA's. He has been ranked as high as number 23 in doubles and number 61 in singles this season. The graduate student has picked up a total of seven ranked wins, including four in doubles and two in singles. He is currently a part of the number 48 ranked doubles team in the nation. Owen Stamper. Stamper entered the 2022-23 season with one career top five finish through his first two years. This year, he has finished in the top two three times including a win at the Lake Las Vegas Intercollegiate, where he set a personal best with a 54-hole score of 205, 11 under. Eston Snyder. Snyder has been among baseball's most prolific performers both on and off the field. In addition to fielding a perfect GPA and being a member of the SAAC, 
Snyder boasts a 283 average and three homers as of April 17. Jordan Ferguson. Ferguson led a defensive unit that ranked in the top five nationally in interceptions, defensive touchdowns, red zone defense, and turnovers game. The Hawaii Bowl MVP honors and later garnered Hula Bowl MVP. The Atlanta Georgia native also just became the third player in school history to be named a finalist for the All-State AFCA Good Works team. True Blue President's Award. I'm proud to announce that winners of the 2023 True Blue President Award, I'm sorry, I need to flip the card over. Okay. I'm proud to announce that winners of the 2023 True Blue President Award is a young man who has made us all so proud from Blue Raider football, Jordan Ferguson. <laughs> Jordan is not here this evening as he's taken part in the NFL draft, but here's a video message to us. Hey, what's up Blue Raider family? It's Jordan Ferguson here checking in. First, I would like to give all glory to God. A special shout out to Coach Stock and Coach West for the help me develop as a student, a young man, and an athlete. I express extreme gratitude and gratefulness for this prestigious award. With growth and maturity in my leadership, community service, and character led me to this honor. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know I have plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Have faith and trust God's plan. This award is for everybody who helped me along my journey and never gave up on me. I love you guys. I thank you guys with all my heart. I'll never let you down, and I promise to make you proud. Our town, our team, Royal Raiders, bleed blue, baby. In a year where we celebrate 50 years of Title IX across the country, and on this campus, we celebrate a great group of women who are just as remarkable as their male counterparts. Let's meet our True Blue President Award nominees in the female division. Female President's Award nominees. Courtney Whitson, the 2022 President's Award winner, majors in English with a minor in athletic coaching. The well-rounded Whitson, earned first-team All-CUSA honors in 2022-23 after starting all 31 games played, becoming just the fifth Lady Raider in school history to reach the 1,000 career point mark and the 800 rebound mark. The three-time recipient of the Conference USA Commissioner's Academic Medal is also well-versed in community service and is an active member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Catherine Caldwell. Catherine Cobble has competed in every round of the Blue Raiders schedule over the past three years. She has recorded the second lowest scoring average of her career as of March 28, 2023. Cobble ends her career as the Blue Raiders all time leader in rounds played with 127. Caroline Manley, a biochemistry major, started and played every minute of the 17 game season for the Blue Raiders finishing 2022 with 4,496 consecutive minutes across 49 matches, dating back to late in her freshman year, never missing a start in four years. A team captain, Manley was named to the academic All-Conference USA second team in 2023. Muskin Gupta, while majoring in supply chain management, is a three-time ITA scholar-athlete, two-time CUSA academic medal recipient, and two-time member of the CUSA Commissioner's Honor Roll. The senior is leading in singles with 11 and leads the team in doubles with nine victories in the spring season. Taylor Reisert. Taylor Reisert has a perfect 4.0 GPA while majoring in business administration. A two-time member of the CUSA Commissioner's Honor Roll and two-time CUSA Academic Medal recipient, 
Eisert earned Conference USA Center of the Week two times in 2022, finishing third in the Conference USA in total assists. She reached the 2,000 career assist mark this past season, becoming just the third Blue Raider to do so in the 25-point era. Gretchen Nee is a special education major in her fifth year on the softball team as a pitcher. Mead has almost 100 innings pitched this season to lead her team in the circle with a 2.2 ERA and has 10 wins this season in her 15 starts. Mead is active volunteering with the Special Olympics of Tennessee's Area 16 Spring Games held on the campus of MTSU. Female President's Award nominees. I'm proud to announce that there are two very deserved winners of this award this year. Gretchen Mead, a graduate studi student from Lady Raider softball and from Lady Raider basketball, junior Courtney Whitson. Thank you all. Uh, blessed is the first word that I can think of when i receiving this award. Blessed to be able to play my fifth year here. Uh, thank you to my coaches, the athletic department, and to my teammates. Don't forget we have a last home series this weekend. <laughs> hey guys. Um, I'm kind of surprised, but uh, you know, thank God. Um, thank you to everyone who makes this possible, of course. My teammates, um, the athletic and ac academic administration. Um, you know, it's just an honor to be a part of MTSU Athletics, so go Blue. Well, as we always like to do near the end of the show, we like to show our own shining moments from this past year. From the field to the pitch to the court, we saw plenty of things that earned a spot on our all sport highlight video. Middle Tennessee, the road warriors that they have been, they have done it again. As Middle Tennessee knocks off the 18th ranked Louisville Cardinals. And number 25 goes down in Murphy Center. Marcel Kamrowski, Captain Clutch tonight in Winston-Salem. Thank you. 
here for Middle Tennessee Athletics. Give them all a big round of applause. I tell you, has everybody had a good time tonight? I mean, who knew what could happen? Liz McPhee got a new degree she didn't even know about tonight, so we got that done, so we're good there. Uh, I want to thank a couple of people before we uh, go right into this wrap-up. Uh, the creative folks in athletic communications, all these graphics and everything you've seen, they've done a great job tonight. Nathan Wallach, uh, Rachel Fullerton, uh, our students from the College of Media and Entertainment have done all the video work. They're behind the cameras. They're making sure everything runs smoothly. And of course, our folks here at the Tucker Theater, just a great staff. It's been an amazing night. We certainly want to congratulate all the nominees and all of our winners this evening. So please give everybody that's been nominated, everybody that's won tonight, give them all a great round of applause. Post those pictures and videos using the hashtag RCA2023. Well, we talked about all the people who are here that helped out tonight, but prior to boxing everything up tonight, I want to give a special thanks to Leanne Bruton for a ton of work she did on the front end. She wasn't able to be here tonight. She's been a little busy. She recently gave birth. So uh, our newest baby raider, EJ. So I think we have a picture of him there. He is our newest baby raider, so thanks to Leanne there. To our student athletes, as we said from the very, very beginning tonight, this night is all about you. So keep making us proud and thank you for all that you keep doing and have done and enjoying this very special night. So always remember, wherever you go and whatever you do, be loud, be proud, and let's go blue. Good night, everybody. Yeah.